tonight, our Father and the Lord, Pastor Dr. W.F. Kuma. You put your hands together. Amen. You're welcome. And save me. He has come to save you. He'll save. He'll heal. He'll deliver. He'll set you free. Total freedom. What are you? Total freedom. For you. For everyone. Everyone here. Everyone online. Everywhere. In Jesus name. Father. We well, thank you tonight. We bless your name. We thank you for the promise. You will come. And save. And heal. And deliver everyone. I pray Lord. You open our eyes. To see your salvation. To see your healing. To see your deliverance. And to obtain. Every blessing from heaven. In Jesus name. Put joy in every heart. Laughter in every mouth. Healing in everyone. And Lord, we pray in definite ways you'll save and heal and deliver. Set free tonight in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, we pray. God bless you. You can sit down. Tonight, we come to an interesting story, an instructive story, an imperishable story, a story of the word of God. Instructive, interesting, imperishable. And this is what happened in the ministry of Christ. Many times when we read all these stories in the ministry of Christ, we might know the story in our head. He will recall it from my memory. But then, what the Lord has preserved, the instruction there, what the Lord has preserved, the memorable experience there, Many of us do not have. And so, when I read the story tonight, don't have the attitude. I know that. I saw that. I can even preach that. What's the story? It's the story of total deliverance through faith in the unlimited Christ. Christ, the Savior. Christ, the Redeemer. Christ, the liberator, Christ, the emancipator, who came to set us free, unlimited, unlimited in action, unlimited in authority, unlimited in power, unlimited as to time, unlimited as to place, unlimited as to the circumstance and situation that you have total freedom through faith in the unlimited Christ. Deliverance. Our soul needs deliverance. Our spirit needs deliverance. The inner man, like a giant inside us. Although we have good body, healthy body, and we have maybe a good plan, but the inner man inside us that shall rise up unfettered, untied, unlimited, unhindered. That inner man is tied within. And even though we have a good body, the inner man is impoverished. And the inner man needs 
deliverance. Sometimes the body itself is weak, worn out, decreasing in strength, and is like it cannot get up and do what it needs to do. The body having eyes that cannot see. The body having ears that cannot hear. The body having feet and legs that cannot walk. That body needs deliverance. The soul. My soul, why art thou cast down? There are things in life that depress the soul. And the soul is sorrowful. And the soul is in despair. And the soul is hopeless. And so, because of that sorrow, because of that hopelessness, the soul is not active, agile, happy, glad to rise up and to go and pursue and to do what needs to be done. The soul needs deliverance. The inner man, the spirit, the soul, the body, the totality of the man needs deliverance. Why? That's why it's called total deliverance. Deliverance for the spirit. Deliverance for the soul. Deliverance for the body. Deliverance for the total, the whole personality. Total deliverance through faith. Human strength cannot give us total deliverance through faith. Education, all we have learned, all we have known, cannot give us total deliverance through faith. Faith in Christ. Faith in the unlimited Christ. And tonight, total freedom has come. I said for you, for your family, for everyone there, total freedom has come in Jesus' name. Through faith in the unlimited Christ. Look at the story. Mark chapter 7, reading from verse 25. For a certain woman whose young daughter had an unclean spirit, heard of him, and came and fell at his feet. She came and she worshipped. There are many people who are too much in a hurry. I come, give me, give me, give me. Worship, fall down at his feet, hear his word, accept his word, believe his word, embrace his word. She fell at his feet. In verse 26, the woman was a Greek, a Gentile, a Syrophoenician by nation, and she besought him that he, Christ, that he, the Son of God, that he, Emmanuel, God with us, that he, the unique one, that can do what no other man can do, that he, the Savior, the Redeemer, the Deliverer, were cast forth the devil out of her daughter. Verse 27. But Jesus said unto her, Let the children first be filled, for it is not right, it is not meat, it is not proper, it is not appropriate to take the children's bread and to cast it unto the dogs. Not right to take the children's bread and cast that bread, the healing, the bread, the deliverance, the bread, the freedom, the bread, the redemption, 
the bread, the solution to the problem, the bread, and cast that to the dogs. That's where some people will check out and go away. That's where some people will get angry. If you are angry at God, how can you get what you're asking for? If you are angry at Emmanuel, God with us, how can you get what you are looking for? If you are angry at the great shepherd, the shepherd that gave his life for your ransom, for your redemption, how can you have the miracle you are looking for? It is not right. It is not meet to take the children's bread and cast it Unto the dogs, verse 28, and she answered and said unto him, Yes, Lord. She didn't say, No, Lord. She didn't say, I know I'm coming from Greeks. I know I am a Greek. I know I am a Syrophoenician woman. But you are Christ, don't you know? There are good people everywhere that I'm coming from Greece. Does that mean I'm a dog? Does that mean all the Israelites, they are children, I'm like an animal? That I'm a Syrophoenician woman? Does that mean I am despicable, defiled, rejected? And then all the children of Israel are better than I. You know, when you come to the Lord and the Lord tells you something, instead of arguing, instead of saying, no, cannot be like that. No, I don't accept that. No, that cannot be true. You ought to be like this woman. And you have to say, yes, Lord. Then she said, yet the dogs under the table, each of the children's crumbs. In verse 29, and he said unto her, and Christ, knowing her sincerity, he knows all things, and Christ, knowing her mind, knows your mind. And Christ, knowing what she has said, is coming from the deep heart of spiritual understanding. For they saying, go thy way. The devil is gone out of thy daughter. I, saw, I thought somebody would say amen there. The devil will go out of that place. That's the freedom. The devil, originator of sickness, when he goes out. The devil, originator of defeat, when he goes out. The devil, the originator of insanity, when it comes out. The devil, the originator of every evil thing that ever happened in your life. When he comes out, that's freedom. And tonight... For you, for you, total freedom. Freedom within, freedom without, freedom in every situation of your life. Freedom. It is mine. It is mine. Say it with faith. Say it with confidence. Say it with assurance. Look at verse 30. In verse 30, and when she was come to her house, she found the devil gone out. Never to come again. The affliction that is healed, the sickness that is healed, the infirmity that is healed, gone out never to come back again. And her daughter laid upon the bed. 
That's the story. Total deliverance through faith in the unlimited Christ. Three things we're quickly looking at. Number one, the activities and the works of unclean spirits. The activities and the works of unclean spirits. Number two, the affirmation and worship of unarrogant souls. Souls that are not arrogant. Souls that are not proud. Souls that are not self-filled. They are not filled for self. And Christ says, it is not me. It is not right. It is not appropriate to give the children's bread unto dogs. And they say, yes, Lord. That's true. She was not proud. She was not full of ego. She was not arrogant. She didn't say, never. Nobody ever said that to me in life. She said, Lord, you know me more than I know myself. I am that dog. Unacceptable, defiled, sinful. But I come, you can wash me. You can cleanse me. You can change my nature. You can change me from being a dog. And you can make me a sheep in the sheepfold. The affirmation and the worship of on arrogant souls. Number three, the authority and the wonders of the unlimited Savior. That authority will work in your life tonight. That power will work in your life tonight. And the Lord himself, in his authority, in the great anointing that breaks every yoke, Yokes in your life are broken tonight. All those messengers of Satan wanting to destroy your life, wanting to defile your life, and wanting to confer your soul, your mind, your heart into eternal condemnation. The hand of the evil one will be taken away from your life tonight in Jesus' name. Let's look at number one. Number one, the activities and the works of unclean spirits. Mark chapter 7, verse 25. For a certain woman whose daughter, young daughter, had an unclean spirit. Had an unclean spirit. Had an unclean spirit. It's not just that the unclean spirit was by her side. She had, she possessed, she was being used, she was being directed, she was owned by the unclean spirit. And watch at the activities of unclean spirits, uncleanness, and language unclean, your language unclean, and thoughts unclean. Unclean thoughts are not the products of Holy Spirit, that the products and the fruit of unclean spirits torment, tormenting her body. Tormenting her life. That's not of the Holy Spirit. It's of the unclean spirit. And being driven in the way of defilement. Adultery. Fornication. That's not the work of the Holy Spirit. It's the work of unclean spirit. Violence. Taking things. Breaking them. Destroying them. And destroying their lives. That's not the work of the Holy Spirit. It's the work of an unclean spirit. 
and the unclean spirit she had, she possessed, the unclean spirit, and the unclean spirit possessed her and controlled her, controlled her life, controlled her habit, controlled her action, and then even became injurious. You see, there are people who have what the Bible names are the works of the flesh. The works of the flesh are not the product of the Holy Spirit. They are the works, they are the products of an unclean spirit. When your mind is unclean, when your heart is unclean, when dirty, defiling, corrupting words come out of your mouth, unclean. And when your plans and your thinking and the direction of your life is unclean, that's not the work of the Holy Spirit, it's the work of an unclean spirit. And when you lean on the company that is unclean, association unclean, gangs unclean, that's the work of the unclean spirit. When you are always attracted to unclean books, unclean pictures, pornography, and loving, wanting the sight of naked women, and when you are in the night all alone by yourself, everything you think about, everything you do, in your sleeping hour, even from the waking moment, everything is unclean. That's not the Holy Spirit, that is the work of an unclean spirit. And now you come. Like that woman came and you said, the unclean spirit, the unclean state of mind, and the unclean senses, and the unclean sight. You know the site where to make yourself deeply, doubly unclean. You have stored that. And any time that unclean spirit pushes you, go for that, you go for that again. It's the activity and it's the work of the unclean spirit. And the unclean spirit grabs you. Unclean spirits want servants. They want slaves. And they don't want to release their grief. But tonight, whether they like it or not, they will let you go. And all those things, activities unclean, life unclean, language unclean, Disposition unclean, inner nature unclean. The Lord will set you free tonight in Jesus' name. It is not meat. It is not right. It is not appropriate to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs. Lord, what do you mean? Are you talking to her alone? Are you talking to me through her? Are you talking to the rest of the world through this woman? Dogs, you remember the scriptures? That says in John chapter 10, verse 27, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. He doesn't say, My dogs hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. He was saying, Dogs are outside the kingdom dogs do not belong to the savior and dogs do not inherit the kingdom my sheep not my dogs 
actually Christ used different pictorial names to identify the people who are not a sheep. It says in Matthew chapter 25, reading from verse 33 there, it says, the king come, and he set the sheep on the right hand, but the goats on the left. And so the sheep belong to him. My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. He didn't say, my goats hear my voice. The dog is interested in the vomit. The dog is interested in defilement. Let the children first be filled. The dogs are not members of the kingdom. Look at yourself today. If Christ came to you, and if you'll allow him to tell you the truth, will you say, you are a dog, you love your vomit, you love your corruption, you love your defilement? He'll never say, my dogs hear my voice. The dogs do not hear. He'll never say, my goats hear. They don't belong to him. Are you as stubborn as a goat? Obstinate as a goat? Self-willed as a goat? Well, they are not in the kingdom. And he pushes them to the left hand side. And he will say unto them, Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity, because you are not of my sheep. The Lord was talking to religious uh, people in Matthew chapter 23. And then uh, he tells them in verse 33, Matthew chapter 23, verse 33, ye serpents and generation of vipers. He said, my sheep hear my voice. How about the vipers? They are not part of the kingdom. He called men and women and boys and girls by another name, dog, goat, viper. And as you look at the word of God, you're going to find people described who are on the other side. And if you'll accept, like that woman accepted, did you say, I'm a dog? Yes, Lord, I am. Change me. Did you say, I'm a stubborn goat? Yes, Lord, transform my life. Did you say, I am a hiding serpent? I'm moving, and people don't know my real character. Yes, Lord, change me. In the Bible, the Lord gives a list, a catalog of the unclean of the unacceptable and he said one of them the bat the bat is, is neither for the day nor for the night the bat be a is neither part of the animals walking totally or flying totally neither here or there. Are you like that? Like the bat? And the Lord never said, my bats hear my voice. No. Those people who are neither here nor there. The people that are not standing straight, they do not have the backbone to live the righteous life. When they're in Rome, they do as the Romans do. When they are in Babylon, they do as the Babylonians do. The Lord never said, my chameleons hear my voice. 
they take the picture and the shape of all their surrounding anywhere they are the fitting they are chameleons he didn't say my chameleons hear my voice he said my sheep hear my voice there are people you can never tell where they belong if they are among the gang of robbers the fitting if they are among the company of liars the fitting if they are among the people who are adulterous and idolatrous, the fitting, they are chameleons. And the Lord never said, my chameleons hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. Never is the sheep. And so you want to ask yourself, the Lord identified that woman as a dog identified another as goat identified another as viper identified another as birds identified others as chameleons there are people their lives are just like the lives of tortoise and you have to go back to the old testament and the Lord begins to describe the unclean animals. Tortoise, very crafty, cunning, and will dribble you here and there as the fables go. The Lord did not say, my tortoise, undependable, unreliable, or steady, crafty, Cunning, my tortoise, hear my voice, never. My sheep, hear my voice, and they follow me, and I know them. And it says, I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. How about the dog? How about the goat? about the tortoise about the leopard that cannot change your skin that cannot change its habit that goes from birth to death with all those stripes on the body how about the viper they will be on the other side you will not go to the other side me I will not go to the other side you know, my friend, it's possible to be a preacher and go to the other side, preach one night before the light, and then in the night, without the light, without the crowd, be a dog and go back to your vomit. Be a viper, a serpent, and bite other people. Be a tortoise and be crafty and be cunning even though you are a preacher but to see all those personalities will not get to heaven look at revelation chapter 22 i'm reading from verse 15 revelation chapter 22 verse 15 but without outside are the dogs the vipers, the goats, the bats, the tortoise, the vipers, and the unclean, for without are the dogs, and sorcerers, and mongers, and murderers, and idolaters, and whosoever, whosoever, Whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. Any hope? Yes. There is hope for everyone. For you, there is hope. The Lord will put the joy of salvation in your life tonight in Jesus' name. The happiness that comes as a result 
of not being a dog anymore, not a viper anymore, not a goat anymore, not a vulture anymore, not a dangerous person anymore. The Lord will turn your life, he'll change your life around in Jesus' name. Look at verse 17 there in Revelation chapter 22, verse 17. And the spirit and the bride say, come, whoever you are. And whatever description the heavenly father and Christ, the son of God, hath made of you. The spirit and the bride say, come. And let him that heareth say, come. And let him that is a thirst come. I'm thirsty for a change. I'm thirsty for a transformation. I'm thirsty for total redemption. I'm thirsty for a change, a change of my nature, a change of my habits, a change of my life, so that I will not be a dog anymore. I will be a sheep in the fold of the Lord. The shepherd, the good shepherd, gave his life for the sheep. And as you come and you turn away from the lifestyle, of the dog, of the goat, of the vulture, of the bat, of the, of the viper. If you turn around and say, Lord, I come. Tonight, the Lord will take you. I said, tonight, the Lord will take you. And he will come and save you. He will come and deliver you. He will come and set you free. And it said, let he that is a thirst, let him come. And whosoever, whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. The woman that came, a Greek, a Syrophoenician, she came as a dog. But then went away as a woman of faith, believing on the Lord Jesus Christ and submitted her life unto the Lord and he worshipped him and said Lord yes it is true and as you come to the Lord today and you affirm the word of God concerning the sinner the word of God concerning the evil doer and you said that's me that's me I repent, I turn, I give myself unto you. A change will come in your life. The authority of Christ that breaks every yoke and makes you stand upright, upright in the public, upright in the private, upright in the inner man, upright in your soul, upright in your life that power of redemption will come to you tonight and transform your life completely are you the man i'm talking about i said are you the man i'm talking about are you the woman i'm talking about your faith in god and say yes lord i come your life will never be the same again your family will never be the same again. That body that has wrought for pain with impossibilities, almost in a helpless, hopeless condition, a change will come. He will come and heal you. He will come and deliver you. But then, you recognize, I will not follow the pattern of the dog anymore, I repent. You understand? I will not follow the self-will, the obstinacy of a goat anymore, I repent. I will not follow the dangerous life of the viper anymore, I repent. I will not follow the unstable life of a bat, neither part of the birds nor part 
of the animals that walk on four. I now want to be straightforward, not a batch anymore, and you repent. The Lord will take you. The Lord will save you. The Lord will turn your life around. And then he'll transform you to be a sheep following after the shepherd. And you'll be able to say, he is my Lord. He is my redeemer. The Lord is my shepherd. And then I shall not want. Good things will happen in your life. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Point number three now. The authority and the wonders of the unlimited Savior. The Savior, it saves from sin. It saves from sickness. It saves from uh, tormenting, uh, vexing uh, spirit. Unlimited, able to save your soul. Able to transform your life. Able to put a new nature, a new lifestyle, a new devotion, a new passion into your life. That now you walk in the right direction. The Savior, able to heal, able to deliver, able to set you free. Tonight is your night. Tonight is my night. It will happen. Mark chapter 7, verse 29. And he said unto her, for this say, because you accepted what I said, and you said, Yes, Lord. For this saying, because you did not contradict me, your Savior, and you said, Yes, Lord. For this saying, you are not proud, you are not egotistic. You were not arrogant. You were not full of self. You were not full of argument. And you said, yes, Lord, for this saying, go thy way. The devil is gone out of thy daughter. I drive the devil out of your family. Out of your body out of your profession. You know, there are people that didn't know the truth. Like the Israelites. Christ told them, if the Son shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. They said, freedom? How do you think we need freedom? We're not under any bondage. And Jesus said, You of your father, the devil. And the works of your father, you will do. He was a liar from the beginning. And a murderer. And when he speaks a lie, he speaks of his own. Because he is the father and the source of all lies. They didn't know that. They didn't accept that. They didn't do like this woman did. He's saying, yes, Lord, that's who I am. But this woman accepted. And the moment she accepted, the power of God came to work in her life in her family, upon her daughter. And the moment you accept the word of God, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. 
Yes, Lord, I'm a sinner, but you are the Savior. I turn. I repent. I move away from my vomit, from my corruption, and I come unto you immediately tonight. Salvation will come to you. Forgiveness will come to you. Freedom will come to you. You will go out of this place not like a dog, not like a goat, not like a viper, not like a bat, not like a tortoise, no more crafty, no more cunning. You become a child of God. Where is he? Where are you? Amen. I say amen to your life. I say amen to your miracle. I say amen to the transformation the Lord will do in your life today. He has power. Power to do. Power to change. Power to heal. Power to destroy the works of the devil. Matthew chapter 28 verse 18. Matthew chapter 28 reading from verse 18. Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power. How much power? Tonight, how much power? On your behalf, how much power? To, to heal your sick, what kind of power? To deliver you from oppression, what kind of power? And to set you completely free, what kind of power? To break the yoke in your life, how much power? All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. All over the earth, all over the globe, everywhere that power that transforms life, that changes situations, that heals the sick, that delivers the oppressed, that power is here tonight from the unlimited Savior. Whoever you are, he will come and save you. Wherever you are, he'll come and save you. And then he'll come and heal you. He will come and heal you. He will come and deliver you. Congratulations, I welcome you into the kingdom that you turn away from the life that is not acceptable unto the Lord, and you turn unto the Lord, and you call him your Lord and your Savior. And whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord tonight shall be saved and healed and delivered and set free in Jesus' name. Where is the man? Where is the woman? Where is the one there that all the power of Christ will be focused and centered on your life and he will come to you there and save you and heal you and deliver you. Amen. Amen for you. Amen for your miracle. Amen for your salvation. This is your day and this is your time. It will happen now. It's bowed and eyes closed and you're coming in all sincerity and you tell the Lord, yes Lord, yes Lord, yes Lord, I was, I was, I was that dirty man, that defiled woman, I come and I receive you now as my Savior and as my Lord. Yes, Lord, everything you said about me is correct, but now I come. Now I come. Heads bowed, eyes closed. You are coming and you know that today is your day that the Lord 
will save you tonight, will forgive you tonight, will transform your life and change you completely tonight. Wherever you are, raise up that hand. Wherever you are, raise up that hand. God bless you there. God bless you there. And anywhere you are, over the radio, over the television, anywhere you are, any continent, any country, in the privacy of your home, anywhere you are, you want this change and you want this transformation, raise up your hand there. Why don't you stand up as you are raising up your hand? Why don't you rise up? Where are you? Where are you? The Lord is looking for you and the Lord is waiting for you. Where are you now? Far to the back, in the front, in the middle, anywhere you find yourself, the Lord will cleanse you. The Lord will wash you whiter than snow. The Lord will change your nature. Dogs will not get into the eternal kingdom. Goats will not get into the eternal kingdom. The vipers, the serpents, who are doing evil underneath, underground, in the green grass, will not get to the kingdom of God. The bats, they're neither here nor there. They will not get into the kingdom. The chameleons, who take the picture or the appearance of all their environment, anywhere they go, they fit in anywhere. They will not get into the kingdom. They are unclean. They are unclean. The tortoise, crafty, cunning, lying, deceiving, will not get into the kingdom. But the people who come and say, Lord, I spread my whole life before you. Cleanse me. Wash me, change me, turn my life around. Tell him right there, he will do it now. Are you raising up your hands? Are you standing up? Have you looked at your life? Do you know the Lord is calling you tonight? Do it now. I'm going to pray for you, and the Lord will take you from where you have been. It will take you to this new nature, take you into his kingdom. Let's up that hand again while you are standing up. Father, in the name of Jesus, we well, thank you that whosoever will sincerely call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And all these resting up their hands here, and over there on social media, in their homes, on the radio, over the television there, and they say, Lord, I come. I thirst for total freedom. I thirst for your salvation. I thirst for your forgiveness and freedom. Save them according to your word in Jesus' name. Transform their lives. Turn their lives around. Change them from what they were. And make them sheep in the fold in the kingdom of God. Put a new nature in their hearts. That what they were doing before, evil, unclean, they will not do them anymore. And let your grace fill up their hearts. They all live in newness of life. Confirm that salvation in their hearts, in their lives, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 